everybody. Oh my goodness. Thanks so much, Product School, uh, for inviting me to this awesome event. I cannot believe how many people are here today. Uh, very, very excited to be here. Uh, as Carlos said, I'm Andrea Chesley. I'm the VP of Product at Boxed. Um, we are an e-commerce company, and uh, we're the place to go to uh, for when you need your household basics, your pantry needs. Um, and I just want to tell you a little bit about myself, my path into product, uh, before I share my lessons with you guys so you know how I uh, got there. So really quickly, some quick facts. Um, I am from New York City. How many here are native New Yorkers? Show of hands. Come on, really? That's it? We're such a rare breed nowadays. Um, I started out in computer science and uh, ended up in uh, English and art, go figure, but that's how product is, right? And um, I've spent 15 years in product, product and tech, primarily in the e-commerce and retail space. Um, so really non-linear, I'll talk about that in a little bit. And I've built and scaled teams and products, uh, really getting a chance to solve interesting problems along the way. So what does that non-linear path look like? So I've worn many, many hats before I got into product. So for example, in college, I was um, in uh, customer care. And the reason I'm telling you guys all of this is because uh, I really, you know, before, uh, I don't want to date myself, but uh, when I was getting into product, there was really, there was no product school, and it was really taking all of the experiences that you have and using them for skill building. So when I finally got into product, it really was more of a step ladder progression for me, and I've worked in various companies, large companies like Verizon, uh, as, as Carlos said, mid-sized companies like Zappos, and then some various startups, high growth, middle stage, early stage, et cetera. So why am I telling you all of this? Why is this relevant? Because along the way, this is where I've really gotten a chance to pick up my lessons, and it really leads me into my first lesson that I want to share with you guys. The, uh, the, the first lesson is basically being able to understand and know um, who you are. So really trusting that, um, that foundation of basically understanding the the core in which the culmination of all of your experiences so far um, and knowing what, what you stand for. And so what that really means is if you think about knowing what you're flexible about, knowing what you're going to be caving in, and so maybe if you wanna write that down, understanding what those are, I think that's really important because that's sort of the foundation in which you're going to be able to uh, really get a chance to um, lay out and then take the next lessons. Lesson number two. Um, lesson number two is basically being the leader. Um, th the reason I say this is because if you think about just sort of every stage of your product career, it's really an opportunity for you to, to, to lead. And that sounds really counterintuitive, but if you think about product in general, Product is really sort of the way that I think about it, uh, being the de facto leader of your team. And so what does that really mean? If you think about just at every stage, being that, that, uh, that, that person that brings your teams together, even though they might not necessarily report into you, that is sort of the opportunity for you to rise, set the vision, maybe it's not the most popular thing, but rally your, your, your team together. And as you progress in your career, as I showed in my career ladder, really what changes is, is really your scope, your reach, your influence, and so, Take, take where you are now and just start acting and being that leader. And so let me give you an example. When I was at Zappos, I took on uh, the VIP product. How many here have shopped at Zappos before? Hopefully a better show of hands than the native New Yorkers. Not as many, but uh, if you're familiar with Zappos, uh, there is a, a VIP program, and so that was my product. It was a separate site, so it was a, there was a, a separate app experience, and there were all these whole suite of um, uh, 
features and benefits, things like a point store, things like you get your, your shoes next business day delivery, things like, hey, you can win a giant unicorn because everybody wants a giant unicorn, right? And so when I took over that product, I realized, okay, how are we gonna scale this? All of these features, what really resonates with the user? And so going back to that first lesson that I said to you guys, trusting who you are, I knew that I was, uh, I wanted to, to, be, to be bold, I was strategic, I was uh, thinking big, but it was also deep down very customer focused and very data driven. And so when I surveyed customers, because again, right, you're using all the skills so far that you've, you've uh, built over time in your experience. So going back all the way in college where I was a customer care uh, agent and understanding, okay, well, let's talk to our customers they didn't really care about the big unicorn. They didn't really care about us flying them into Vegas and having a grand old time on the strip. What they really cared about is just getting their, um, their order next business day. So imagine all of those features, everything that we had to support when really there were maybe two or three things that customer, the customers cared about. And so being that leader meant making the very unpopular decision of decommissioning those features, but keeping my team interested, keeping my team excited, um, and making sure that we were still delivering the best product possible. So the next lesson I would share with you guys is knowing your stuff. So what I would say here is maybe a little bit controversial, maybe a little bit where if you see me on the street, you're gonna say, hey, Andrea, I don't agree with you, but that's fine, you could totally do that. Um, as a leader, you always hear, okay, well, you have to rise above the fray, you have to, to really have a bird's eye view, and that's very true. I completely agree with that. But what I would say is also to be an effective leader is to be able to provide practical value with specifics. And so what that really means for me, and again, these are just my lessons, not everything here you might take away and say, oh, that was really useful. You might take away and say, that was really shit, Andrea, like none of this I could apply. Uh, so it, with that caveat, but knowing your stuff for me meant if I were an incoming leader um, and trying to understand what the suite of products my team owns, really that meant getting to know the details, sitting down with them, shadowing them. Now, it's not a license for micromanaging, so please, I'm being very clear right now, don't quote me to say, oh, Andrea said I could be a micromanager, that is not true. But what I would say is that spend the time with your team so that you can actually provide practical advice to them. You could actually be a, uh, a useful thought partner. So an example to this is actually a very recent one. Uh, when I was at One Kings Lane, I had an incoming PM and she was owning all of the back office uh, uh, products. And so she spent the time with her, her partners, her, uh, her stakeholders, with the engineers, with the designers, and I was doing the same thing because I wanted to really also bone up on that set of products as well. And so one day during our one-on-one, -on -one, um, she sat me down and we were talking about a problem and she, she gave me this feedback, which I really still hold dear uh, today. And she said to me that, hey, Andre, this is ac actually very, very useful. This is very, very helpful um, because we're actually able to talk to the specifics. We're able to talk to the, the details and you're able to provide me with uh, a, a thought partner that actually gets it. And that might seem really basic, you guys, but unless you really understand that, you're not gonna be able to do that for your team, right? And so, again, just understand that as you go further up in your career, yes, you have to have the bird's eye view. You have to have this sort of um, uh, strategic lens, but don't forget that you're gonna have to dive down and learn the details as well. But what does that really mean in terms of lesson number four? Well, lesson number four is owning your failures. So if you dive too deeply, uh, if you get too much in the weeds, of course there, there is going to be failures. And so here I would say this is probably the, the hardest, even though it might seem the easiest. This is where you're, you're gonna feel defeated, you're going to feel like this is 
not very easy to necessarily get out of because you're so focused on maybe feeling bad about it, thinking about focusing on what didn't work. But what I would say is embrace it, take, take hold of it, see what you can get out of it and really make sure that you, you own these failures so that you can assess and you can iterate because we're all PMs here. How many here have run A-B tests? Please, better show of hands, I hope. All right. Great. Um, and so if you think about it, how many here just gave up after their first A-B test failed? After that first iteration? You don't, right, typically. You'll iterate, you'll, you'll keep making it better, you're going to take your learnings. And so similarly, treat yourself, treat your team. We're products, that might sound really weird, but how do you iterate? How do you, how do you make yourself better? So, an example to this, also very recently at One Kings Lane, we did a replatform uh, project, very, very aggressive timeline. And for anybody here who's ever done a replatform, you know how brutal it is if it's a complete replatform end to end. So we did it. We launched the new site. And I remember this because it was July, and there was a week uh, that uh, in July where the site was going down almost every day. It was horrible. And I can say this very publicly because guess what? Also while it was going down every day, there was an article that came out that talked on Retail Dive, you guys could find this, that talked about how slow the site was. So here we were, we busted our ass to get through this replatform. We worked so hard to get it up and running. The team was very, very positive throughout the way and here we were getting beaten up almost, I mean, really very publicly. Um, and it was very easy to just sit there and feel absolutely defeated. And we probably we did that. I'm not going to say that we didn't. We did it for a little bit. But we made sure we learned. We made sure we sat down with our engineers. We made sure we took every single data point to understand how could we be better? How can we stop this from happening? How can we report back and say these are the things that we've put in place? And that's what we focused on. Today you can go back on that site. I'm no longer there, but I'm happy to say it's not slow. It doesn't go down as, as much, right? There, nobody can really say 100% uptime, but it is much better and we really took our learnings very seriously. So this one is like one of those like really horrible pills to swallow, but is absolutely true. It might seem really simple, but you really have to pay attention to it. And it's super hard to be thoughtful while going through it in the moment. Try, try to detach yourself and make sure you, you ask yourself, what can I get out of it? What can I learn? What can I do to make it better? And then the last lesson I would say is ask for help. So as you go further up in your career, it gets very, very hard to ask for help, and that's, that's fair. But I would say this, um, Gib, Gibson Biddle, who's the former VP of uh, uh, Netflix, who actually gave a talk in um, uh, ProductCon in San Francisco and Seattle, calls it having your personal board, and that's what I think of. So who are your colleagues, your peers in product or within adjacent roles that you trust, that you know you can come to and ask for advice. It's, it's okay to be vulnerable, right? Like to me in the back of my head, it's always like, well, they're gonna think I don't know my job, I don't know how to do anything, but the reality is it really is very helpful to reach out and ask your peers. So I did that very recently. I sat down with a friend of mine who also runs product at another company, and I picked his brain knowing that he went through a similar product that he wanted to iterate on, um, and I wanted to get his perspective. I shushed that little voice in my head that said, ah, I don't really know what I'm doing, it's okay. And guess what, we had such a productive conversation, we nerded out on, on how to iterate on these um, very similar products, non-competitive though, I would say. And it was one of those things that, you know, I, I walked away with a lot of, of um, not just new ideas, but a better perspective. And he walked away similarly with uh, ideas that he can use on his product as well. And it was a very, um, 
useful uh, collaboration where to the point where we actually said, hey, we should do this again. So put yourself out there. Think about who your personal board is because really there is no, there is no, there's no shame and there's no, uh, there's nothing terrible about asking for help. So find your tribe, like these kind of things, right? Form alliances because that is where you can really stretch and grow. Okay, I think that was the end of it. So just in summary, really, really quickly, trust who you are, be the leader, know your stuff, own your failures, and ask for help. And I'm going to ask for help now. Um, if you guys thought this was useful, and actually the, the, the deck that um, I probably sent a little bit too late to ProductCon, but um, the deck that I was supposed to have, if you want to get uh, the, a copy of that deck, please, please, please take a minute to provide me some feedback. If you go to sharefeedback.me, there's a tiny survey, you take it, and in the end you can download the actual deck. So hopefully you found this helpful. Thank you so much. And if you want to stay connected, you can find me on LinkedIn. I'm Andrea Chesley. Take care.